was your inspiration behind opening Sneaker Room? I grew up in Jersey City, in the projects of Jersey City, Marion Gardens, very humble beginnings. And basically, I grew up not being able to afford sneakers. So I remember always seeing, you know, kids in the, in the projects getting sneakers. And, you know, it was like, that's how you knew somebody was doing good or they were cool if they had a shoe. So I didn't have that. And then basically, uh, you know, had a rough life. And then when my mom got sick in 2000 and it was the, she got diagnosed in 2006. And after she passed away, basically, I got a, a big box in the mail. And it was a Nike stock that was framed. And it said, to Siraj, a piece of Nike, you won't wear out, love mom. So from that piece of that, that stock that I got, I asked my aunts and I found out that she knew that I always loved shoes and she wanted to leave me something. It turned into a passion. It turned into me borrowing money and it turned into me opening up a small 3,000 square foot, a 300 square foot store in Jersey City and starting it in 2006. And then, you know, 14 years later, here we are. All of the business owners we've spoken to have had similar stories where it's almost like one day it was like, oh, maybe we, you know, maybe we'll close for a few days or have less operation hours. And then all of a sudden it was, no, we have to shut our doors for the best of public safety. I'm a very optimistic person and I'm always a positive person. This, this pandemic has thrown me a little bit for a curveball because, you know, even with e you look at it and you go, well, are people really going to shop at home? Are people really going to have money to purchase items? And not only that is what items would they really need to purchase, not want to purchase because of the state of our economy. So what we did was we kind of took a different approach, like literally a week after the, 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 the all non-essential business had to close down, we took our storefront windows and we turned them into a billboard for the community. So we wanted to let people know that even though we were shut down, rather than walking by the store or driving by the store, which you shouldn't be anyway, you wouldn't just be looking at merchandise that you couldn't buy. So we did this one day at a time campaign where we put up the heart with the world healing in it. And then I wrote a message to, to the community because like I said, we've been, you know, in Jersey City, we started in 2006. So we've been in Jersey City for 14 years. So, you know, even though it's multiple locations, the city means a lot to me. It was more important to let people know that they weren't alone because even as a business owner, like, you know, I, have a, I had a lucrative business until this happened, but I was hurting with them. I felt their pain. Before I even talk about Sneaker Room, I talk about my philanthropy efforts because that's, that's where my heart is. So before anything, I'm, I'm a humanitarian. And that's where I lie right now. Like, I'm not so worried about business. I'm not so worried about what it looks like. Because to be honest with you, we have no, no say in it. Yeah. If you opened up New Jersey and New York tomorrow, you know, listen, everybody's talking about money being renovated, people getting their jobs back. What about thousands of people on the train coming to my store or going to work and getting sick again? That's right. Like, I just think that a lot of people are, are looking at this pandemic and they're looking at it all in a business sense. They're not looking at it as like, we just went through something of like almost kind of biblical proportions that none of us ever thought we'd see in our lifetime or ever thought was possible. Are people still shopping? Are people buying sneakers right now? Or has it taken a real low? We've been offering better discounts than we've ever done before. Because to be honest with you, we're just trying to move old inventory to keep money flowing and keep revenue going. Maybe single digit sale percentages compared to what we were doing because even myself, I love shoes. I have over a thousand pairs of sneakers. Where am I going? You know, what am I, what am I wearing? Like, I don't know. Cause that's, that's what scares me. Like, you know, like in the industry that I'm in, we're not necessarily a, a, a need. We're more of a want industry. So do people still want this after this happens? What have you been saying, I'm curious, what have you been saying to your team to try to keep them, keep their spirits up, keep them uplifted, keep them motivated, and, and hopefully is something that they want to come back? To let them know that I'm scared too. Because all jokes aside, like, you know, I love my business. It's been around for, you know, for almost 14 years, ups and downs. But truthfully speaking, I don't know if we come back from this. What can our audience do to help Sneak Room to help support you guys? I mean, you know, listen, it's a hard one to say because, you know, like you don't want to be selfish and say like, you know, go to the website and purchase a shoe to help us stay in business because what if they do that, they support us and then they're hurt. I want people just to go on Sneaker Room's Instagram, support us there. Also, you know, you can go to the website. It's, you know, www.snkrroom.com. You know, if you want to purchase a shoe, listen, to be honest with you, you're probably getting the best discount because you're getting them close to, you know, close to cost. So it's a good time for you to buy. But my, what I really think people can do to support Sneaker Room is just stay positive. Know that we're going through it with you, knowing that we're going to get through it together. And, you know, listen, if the business does well and we succeed, God bless. If the business falls off and we don't succeed, okay, we try again.